Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go over my SVCM install on our Honda Odyssey. We have a 2013 Honda Odyssey. Um, if you found this video, you know what VCM is. I'm not going to walk you through it. There's tons of videos out there explaining it. Um, I'm just going to show you very high level um, the SVCM controller and my install. Again, there's a lot of videos on that as well. I don't want to get too in depth here but what i'm going to do is show you my install and what makes it different so right now if you have the controller and you want to install it this is the area of the engine you're going to be working in okay so this is the install area right here this is your svcm controller this is kind of the brains of the unit this is the stock harness this is the SVCM harness. And then down below there is a temperature sensor that you're gonna plug the SVCM unit into. Now, if you bought the SVCM unit, it's gonna come with great instructions. Plus there's great videos out there on how to install it. What I wanna show you is how I changed my install to kind of suit my needs. So what I wanted to do was install a switch onto my unit so that I could turn it on on the highway and just have the VCM off around town. I do a lot of driving on the highway with this van. I take it to Baltimore a lot for work, which is about a 350 mile drive one way. Uh, I'd still like the VCM on on the highway, turn it off around the city for drivability, clean up that plug, help keep the ring seated um, as well. So just a little backstory. This van actually had the the recall done and the new piston rings installed around 160,000 miles or so. It's got 203,000 on it right now. So um, what I wanted to do was just, just increase driving comfort. It's now my daily driver. It used to be my wife's for 10 years. And then we got her a 2023 pilot last year. So she drives that. I now use this car again just because with my job, I either just go to the airport and it sits in the airport parking lot all week, or I take it uh, down to Baltimore for work. All right, so my VCM controller is hooked up to this box here. And basically what this box is, is a wireless relay. Um, when you get your SVCM instructions, it's gonna tell you to run this black wire to the battery and you're all set to go. What I did is I ran this wire to this wireless relay and I'll, I'll go over that in a minute why it's wireless and I basically connected the black VCM wire to the red output terminal on the box so you see how it says out and you connect it to the red one that passes through the 12 volt power supply to the SVCM controller the other red wire goes back to the battery which is right over here and then I put a fuse. The instructions on the SVCM controller will tell you you don't need a fuse. Uh, I, I ran a fuse. So again, black wire to the output of the wireless controller. And then the input is going to go back to your battery. Use a fuse. I always do. And also you're going to need to run a ground to the battery as well. I have a ground wire that's going to come off of this as well and it comes off the input side of that switch. You can see it right there. Okay, so now inside the car, like I said, I have it hooked up to a switch um, and it's wireless and it, it's pretty neat how it works. So this is just on the dash, it's a magnet. The switch itself comes with this little plate that double sides tapes to the dash on the back side. Uh, it came with magnets. I put a little extra magnet on there just because of the curvature of the dash. It just didn't seem to, to, to stay put. But now I took some flexible magnet, put it on the back. You want to keep those screw holes exposed because there's a battery inside this because it is wireless. Uh, if, if you ever need to change it, you're going to want to be able to take those screws out and uh, change it. So now we're back under the hood. You can see the box has a red LED light on it. That means that the box is passing power through the SVCM controller, which means if I were going down the highway right now, the eco light would not come on. It would stay in six cylinder mode the whole time. Say I got on the highway and I now want eco to work. I'm just gonna push off. And you can see the red light goes off. Now the car is gonna operate 
as it should. I push on, that turns the SVCM controller back on, and now the car will only operate as a six cylinder around town, running errands, doing those things, picking my kids up from school and whatnot. Now, another cool feature of this controller is say those batteries do die in that controller and you're in a situation where you wanna turn the controller back on or you wanna turn it off, it has a manual override switch right here on the controller so I can push it. You can see that little switch right there. If I push it again, it'll turn the controller back on. So now the SVCM controller is working and the car will run as a six cylinder. So you may be wondering, A, why did I put a switch in? B, why did I go the wireless route? So A, I put a switch in. This is my third car or third experience with a car with uh, cylinder deactivation. Back when I was a kid, back in the 80s, my dad had a Cadillac Fleetwood. It had the 468 system that everybody said was awful. In my opinion, in my family's opinion, it wasn't awful. It just needed a switch. Um, it was awful around town, but on the highway, it was fantastic. And on that car on road trips, back when the speed limit was 55 miles an hour, we would get 24, sometimes 25 miles to the gallon on the highway with that car. Um, around town, we'd turn it off, it would run great. And that was the major complaint, is that around town, it was always hunting for gears and whatnot. So on that car, the easy way to put a switch in is there was a wire that ran from the transmission to the displacement on demand module, if you want to call it that. I don't, um, that would basically tell the module, hey, the transmission's in third gear, you can now manage your cylinder output. Um, just by putting a switch in there to intercept that signal around town, it would, it would basically run as an eight cylinder. And then on the highway, as soon as we went through the tolls or, or got up the highway speed, my dad would flip the switch and then it would run through its four, six, eight and get phenomenal gas mileage. The second car I had was a Dodge Magnum with the Hemi 2005. Uh, that one, I didn't have a switch on it because it just ran really well and I liked the way that system works, so I never felt a need to intercept it. Um, on this one, we ran it without the VCM interceptor, if you will, the SVCM module, until the piston rings were done and now I have it on there. Uh, just so I can have it off around town, keep it running as a six cylinder, just keep those spark plugs firing and, and stuff of that nature. So uh that's why i went that route why did i go wireless i'm just no spring chicken anymore i didn't want to try to figure out a way to get a wire through this firewall uh and tapping into the fuse box or whatnot so i found this unit on amazon easy peasy bought it it wasn't even expensive i'll put the link to it piece of cake to install it's been on for about four months now uh with the switch and um no problems no issues it's been operating the way I need it to and the way I expect it to. So there you go, SVCM controller install with a switch. I really like the SVCM unit too. One more thing, the reason why I went with it is because it will basically disconnect itself if it's sensing the engine is overheating. There's other units that will not do that, the, the cheaper units that use a resistor. So if this unit senses that the engine is overheating, it will put the engine back into the way the factory intended it to run and alert the driver. Please be warned, some of these cheaper units will not do that and you could overheat your engine and never know about it. So spend the money, get the SVCM. I think it's the best one out there. I have no vested interest in SVCM. It's just a unit I bought and I thought it was great. I hope you liked this video. If you got any questions about the install or about the unit itself, please post it in the comments and I'll get back to you and uh, check back often for more videos. Thank you.